Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to swap the positions of Venus and Mars. That is, Venus will end up in Mars's orbit, and Mars on the contrary will be in Venus's orbit. You'll see how this will affect these planets. All of this will be demonstrated using the Universe Sandbox Simulator. Let's go! Let's start by showing you the habitable zone of the Sun. And as we can see, Mars is right on the edge of the green zone. And as we know, Mars is a cold planet with a very thin atmosphere while Venus, on the other hand, is on the edge between the red and green zones, and it has a very harsh, dense atmosphere. Now, if we were to naturally swap their places, so Venus indeed ends up in a colder spot, and Mars on the contrary, in a truly warmer spot, how would they change? That's the main intrigue here. I'm swapping the planets, so instead of Venus, we'll now have Mars. And in Mars's place, there will be the planet Venus. And now everything looks like this. Here we have Mars, and here we have Venus. So guys, I've set everything up like this. Here we have Mars, and here we have the temperature. I'm starting the simulation. One month will pass per second. The temperature starts rising rapidly. Already the average temperature is minus 80. So let's take a closer look at the surface of Mars. I've focused on the surface area so we can clearly observe everything. Yes, of course, there will be a significant impact on these polar ice caps. Now it's already minus 40 degrees on Mars. Look, at the equator we already have a maximum of 10 degrees Celsius and there are even some bodies of water appearing here. That's interesting. Some ice has appeared here and it's moving toward the pole. So what's happening in the northern hemisphere? Here too, some ice seems to be moving northward. It looks really interesting. Well, that's how the simulator processes it. The fact is, a lot of bodies of water have appeared on Mars. And now the average temperature is approaching zero degrees and is already above freezing. Mars is heating up quite well, though it still hasn't created an atmosphere yet, but it almost looks like I can already see the silhouettes of clouds passing by. I don't know if you can see it, but look, right here, it's like there's already something there. Let's check what's happening with the pressure, and the pressure is already at 1.01 .01 atmospheres. Interesting. A good, dense atmosphere will probably form here on Mars. And now we can see the average temperature is already 23 degrees Celsius. Everything keeps increasing and increasing. Let's keep watching. Oh, here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're already getting a body of water forming. Let's take a look at the Southern Hemisphere, and it's the same thing here. As we can see, we've got ice appearing just like, well, an ice cap has formed. And now it melts and then reforms, depending on its movement along the orbit. After all, Mars does have an axial tilt, so the seasons change. But for some reason, all the ice in the Northern Hemisphere has disappeared. Even with the changing seasons, it doesn't come back. And here, of course, a pretty decent body of water has already formed. Meanwhile, the maximum temperature on Mars has already reached 77 degrees Celsius. Wow! And the average temperature really reaches a staggering 37 degrees Celsius. Incredible. The minimum temperature recorded so far is around a frigid minus 35, or even minus 40 degrees. If I hide the atmosphere and clouds from view, the body of water here really does seem to be getting bigger and bigger. And in the southern hemisphere, as we can see, the ice has almost completely disappeared. Well, there is a minimum temperature, but still, as I understand it, there won't be any ice on Mars in Venus's orbit. I wonder if life will appear on Mars because of all this. I'm switching the display back to atmosphere and clouds. Let me show you what's happening with the pressure here. The current surface pressure is already at 0.31 atmospheres. That's actually pretty good. And all of this continues to steadily build up. Let's also take a closer look at the gas components here. As we can see, it's mainly water vapor that has formed such a dense atmosphere on Mars. There are very few of the other elements present, and there's also water in its liquid form on the surface of Mars, and its percentage I can indeed see is actually growing quite a little bit more. And the ice is showing that it's melting, well that makes sense. A little time has passed, and the temperature on Mars has already reached 52 degrees Celsius. I'll hide the clouds atmosphere and let's see what's happening in the southern hemisphere. And here, guys, vegetation is already starting to form in some areas. It's not year-round, but as you can see, when it's winter here, I guess when it's colder, vegetation can appear. That's interesting, isn't it? And in the Northern Hemisphere too, look closely, there's also a distinct band of vegetation like that present. There's life on Mars, guys. It's possible in some places. Granted, it's near bodies of water, but that's actually pretty realistic. And look at how this body of water from the North Pole of Mars has already reached the equator. Everything is really getting flooded. We sat for a bit, waited a little, and it seems like the temperature has stabilized now. As a result, the average temperature on Mars is 55 degrees Celsius, the surface pressure is 0.46 atmospheres, and the probability of life is 3.32%. 
Now let's take a closer look at this Mars that has formed. Basically the equator is quite desert like because it's very hot there but at the poles you can see this liquid present. In the northern hemisphere as you can see there's quite a lot of it almost as if an ocean has formed. There's less in the southern hemisphere but it's still present there as well. But I don't see any vegetation anymore. Most likely it couldn't last long here because the temperature on this planet has risen even more. Although there are areas on the planet where the temperature is minus 23 degrees. And this is how Mars now looks with realistic sunlight and atmospheric clouds turned on. It has certainly transformed quite nicely. It's nothing like what it was in its original orbit. I also wanted to check, and I think you might be curious too, whether the orbits of Earth or Mercury for example have changed because I basically shuffled the planets around. As you can see everything is fine, everything is rotating stably. So there's no effect on the orbits. Now let's see what's happening with the planet Venus. Here, it has already cooled down from its average temperature to 277 degrees Celsius and the temperature keeps slowly dropping. Well, in general, I'll wait until the temperature stabilizes and then we'll continue. So guys, I waited for a long time. It's already the year 2147 in the simulator. And slowly, very slowly, but surely, really, extremely slowly, the temperature on Venus keeps dropping. And right now, the average temperature on Venus is 222 degrees. Let's take a look at what's happening on the surface. The surface is basically unchanged. I don't see any changes at the poles either. Everything is just as it was. But the temperature of course has dropped across the whole planet. Though the minimum temperature is still above 100 degrees. Even in Mars orbit, Venus hasn't really cooled down much. And as you can see, the surface pressure hasn't changed at all. And obviously there's no chance of life on Venus. All this time I was running the simulation at one month per second because if I speed it up more, the calculations become inaccurate. So I basically had to sit and wait. I got the idea to send the moon on a tangential collision course with Venus. Maybe that would help strip away its atmosphere and maybe even spin it up at the same time. Maybe something will change and things will get better. So the moon is on its way and I'm speeding up time. And now the moon should enter on a tangential path over there. Whoa, what an impact. And just to be sure, I'll launch another moon somewhere over there, let another one crash in and now... Oh, it didn't make it by the way. Now it's going to enter orbit. Well, let Venus have a satellite then. Maybe that will help spin it up too. When it worked, guys. Venus's rotation period is now over 40 hours. That's much better. Alright, I need to remove these fragments. Wow, Venus has a real tail here, everything's burning. Well, that's good. I hope that's the atmosphere burning. And the moon is starting to break apart, of course. I'll probably have to remove it because it will keep heating up Venus. That's not in our favor. After removing the moon along with all the fragments, I'm starting the simulation again to see how Venus cools down. So the average temperature is already 1700 degrees, but it's not really cooling down very quickly. For now, Venus's surface is still extremely hot. So, I'm looking at the pressure levels, and unfortunately, it's only decreased a little bit. I successfully managed to spin up Venus, but the atmosphere wasn't really blown away as much as I had hoped. And basically, the temperature has gone back to its previous, original levels. Now, if I hide the atmosphere and clouds, we can see that basically only new craters have formed on Venus. Otherwise, it hasn't changed at all. And this is exactly how it truly looks under realistic sunlight. Basically, nothing significant has really changed, unlike the planet Mars, which in my honest opinion turned out much more interesting. So, that's the final result of this particular experiment. If you truly enjoyed the video, please give it a like and leave your overall comment with your thoughts about what you have seen. Thank you very much for truly watching and see you again in the next universe.